Hey y'all! In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off with our T-shelf project. And in this video, I'm going to cover breaking down this design into different sheets using the Sheets tab here in the Vectric software. Now, even though I'm doing this in Vectric Aspire, this works exactly the same way in Cut2D, VCarve, Desktop and Pro, and Aspire. When we finished up last time, I had gotten all of my vectors imported from my SketchUp model, which I'm going to keep open so I can refer to it if necessary. And we got our dados and rabbits established on our parts. Now, if you'll recall, I am working with two different material thicknesses here. All of these parts right here are going to be cut from half inch thick material. And these parts here are going to be cut from quarter inch thick material. Also, due to the fact that I am going to be using solid stock, that is not a single piece of this size, I'm going to have to break this down so that I can put these vectors on different pieces of solid material. And that's where sheets comes in. So, I'm going to be leaving this back on this sheet and I'll change the dimensions of the material to reflect that. Now, normally what I do when I design a project is I will size the piece of material to be one inch larger than the vector outline size at a minimum. I like to go a little bit more if I have a piece of material big enough, but at the minimum, I want my piece of material to be one inch larger than the size of the vectors. So with that in mind, I'm going to create a new sheet and I'm going to put each one of these sides onto a sheet of their own. So we'll back out a little bit. I'll open my Sheets tab, and right down here we have a button that says Add New. So I'll add a new sheet, and I'm going to name that sheet Right Side. Then tap Enter, and I've created that sheet. And we see right now it's the same size as the material we set up in Job Setup. Now, the vectors right here, this is my right side. What I'm going to want to do is select just the vector of my outside profile. Then I'm going to come back over to my drawing tab and I'm going to set select object size. And I see that my vector is four inches wide in X. 11 and a half inches high and Y. Now I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees to sit on a piece of material. So I'm going to need to make this material for the right size. So I want to add an inch to this dimension here and that's going to be my height in Y after I rotate it. And I want to add an inch to this dimension here that's going to be my width in X after I rotate it. So I'll remember 5 inches by 12.5 inches. I'll close that, click off. I'm going to go back to my Sheets tab and I'm going to select right side. I'm going to come down here to edit. That opens up a form that's very similar to Job Setup. But if you'll notice up here, it says Edit Sheet. Any changes I make here will only be made to this sheet. So my width in X, I wanted 12.5. 
my height in Y, I wanted 5. Z0 position is going to stay the same on my material surface. My XY datum position for layout purposes is going to be the same. And I'm going to again leave this alone because there are no 3D models in this project. And we'll click OK. Now I have my right side made up. That's the sheet for the right side. Now I will go back over to sheet 1, which by just double clicking on the sheet, I'll select these vectors, right click, move to sheet, right side. Now I will double click on my right side sheet select these vectors I want to go back to my drawing tab rotate them based on the center I want to rotate them 90 degrees apply close and now if I just hit the F9 button on my keyboard it centers up that piece on my right side sheet and I can click off so I've created a new sheet, moved those vectors to that sheet, then oriented them the correct way. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the left side. I already know the size I need, so that's going to be a lot easier. So we'll go back over to Sheets, Add New. I'll call this Left Side. Enter, and it remembered the size that I entered for the last sheet I created. It is going to be the exact same size as my right side sheet. So I'll go back over to sheet one, select these vectors, move to sheet left side, double click on my left side sheet. Back to Drawing tab, select those vectors, rotate them by the center, 90 degrees, apply, close, hit F9 to center them up on the material, and there's my left side sheet. Let me go back over to Sheet 1 now, and again, these two shelves I'm not going to cut in the CNC router. I'm going to cut them on the table saw. So I will create a new sheet for them. So let's get my size. Set selected object size. And I have 14, roughly a half, by 7 and roughly 3 quarter. I will make a piece 15 by 8. Again, I don't need a huge boundary around them because I'm not going to be cutting these on the CNC. This is just so I don't lose these parts within the design, within the drawing. So 15 by 8 will be good enough. I'll come down here and create a new sheet. We'll call this Shelves. Select the name again edit and we'll go 15 by 8 thickness is still a half inch I'm not going to change anything else I'll zoom back out double click into sheet 1 select those two right click Move to Sheet, Shelves. Double click my Shelves sheet. Select these. I do not need to rotate them at all. And I'll hit F9. Now my shelves are placed on their own sheet. And that leaves us with our last two pieces here. And that is my front rails. Again, I'll get a material size. We have 14 inches by 2.5 inches. I will go 
15 inches by three and a half inches on my new sheet size. Sheets, add new. We'll call this front rails, enter. Then I'll immediately come down to edit and the size will be 15 by, what did I say, three and a half? 3.5 and again I'm using a different material thickness so I'll change that material thickness now for this sheet only click OK back out double click onto sheet 1 select these two vectors right click move to sheet front rails back into my drawing tab double click my front rail sheet select these two vectors tap F9 now I can go back over here to my sheets tab I'll go into sheet 1 and I'll click it again after a short pause and I'm going to rename this back tap enter I'll edit it and I'm going to make this piece 16 by 16. Click OK. Select the vector F9. Now I have all of my parts laid out on their own separate sheets. Again, we're dealing with two different thicknesses and we're dealing with different panels of glued up stock. One for the right side, one for the left side, one for the front rails, one for the back. Now in this particular project, it doesn't really matter which order I take these in. I've got to glue up a panel for the back. I've got to glue up panels for the sides. I don't have to glue up a panel for the front rails. I have a piece of material that is big enough for me to cut both of these out of the same piece of material so the grain patterns will match. So I will go ahead and cut this at the same time I cut this on the CNC router. So let's go ahead and start calculating our toolpaths. Scoot over to the toolpath tab. And for this, it's very simple. I just need to do a profile cutout. So with those two selected, I'll do the profile toolpath. My start depth is going to be zero. For my cut depth, I want to cut slightly through this material by about five thousandths of an inch. So I will enter Z plus 0 0.005 then tap the equals button and that gives me the cut depth for this sheet. I'm going to use a quarter inch two flute end mill. I'm going to cut to the outside right. I will do a separate last pass. This piece of material is wide enough or narrow enough that I don't have to use tabs. I can use uh, tape and CA glue to secure this to my spoil board. But I'm going to do a separate last pass allowance of 0.01. I know it's only going to make two passes, but I want that second pass to be right on these vectors to get a nice smooth cut. I'm not going to add tabs. I am going to add a smooth ramp over a distance of one inch. I'm going to check to make sure I have sharp external corners selected and we'll come down and name this front rail cutout and we'll calculate that toolpath. It's warning me the tool will cut through the material I know I want it to. And here in our preview screen, I'm going to change 
the material color to medium wood. If you notice right here next to tool pass, which is checked, I have this drop down menu. This drop down menu is showing me my different sheets. I'm working on front rails now, so I want to make sure that that's the sheet that is highlighted in this drop down menu. We'll go ahead and we'll preview that toolpath and double click to get rid of the waste. There are my front rails. I'll go ahead and reset that preview, close this, go back to my 2D view, and now I want to do my left side since it's right here. So I'll double click my left side sheet and we notice that our toolpath list here has switched over to the left side and we have no toolpaths. Now's the time to create them. So I will select this vector here because that is my rabbit along the back and my dados for my shelves. So I'll come over here to pocket. And for my cut depth, I want to cut this pocket a quarter of an inch deep. My end mill is already selected, a quarter inch two flute end mill. I'll be using a down cut end mill to give me a nice clean surface here along the cuts. I'm going to do that in two passes. I will use an offset pattern. And I'm going to ramp my plunge moves in over a distance of one inch. I'm not going to use a pocket allowance. And we will call this Dados and Rabbit. And we'll calculate that toolpath. Now go ahead and make sure it's on the left side and preview. And there is our dados and rabbit cut. Let me go ahead and change that to medium wood. I should have done that in job setup, but that's okay. All right, so there are my dados. Go back to the 2D view, close my preview window. And now I want to do my profile cutout. My profile cutout is going to remember the last settings I set when I calculated that first profile toolpath. Well, my cut depth is not going to be a quarter of an inch. I need it to go through the material. So again, Z plus point zero zero five equals point five oh five I'm going to be using again a quarter inch end mill I'm going to machine to the outside I'm going to do a separate last pass with a allowance of point oh one and again this piece is small enough that I can use CA glue and tape so I don't need to use tabs. So I'm not going to add tabs to the toolpath. Again, I'm going to add ramps. A smooth ramp over a distance of one inch. Make sure I have sharp external corners checked. And then I'll come down here and I'll call this. This is the left side. cut out and I'll calculate that tool path it's warning me it's going to cut through the material and we'll preview that tool path I'll double click to remove the waste and there is my left side with the dado cut in the back to inset the back of the cabinet or the back of the shelf rather and two dados cut to accept the shelves. From here, I'll go in and do my right side 
and the back in exactly the same manner. Okay, with my last toolpath calculated for all of my sheets, I can now save G code. So let me go over here and show you something. If I click on this drop down menu, I can click All Sheets. Now, the only one that's visible is the one that's highlighted here in the 3D view. I can zoom out, and that's all I can see in the 3D view. Now, if I switch over to front rails, there's my front rails. I had reset the preview, if you recall. I can switch over to the left side. I had reset that preview as well. Switch over to the right side. That preview reset. Go back to the back. And there is just my material. If you switch out of a sheet, any preview you have done, is cleared. It is reset. I do have all of my tool paths for all of my sheets and now I'm ready to save G-code. What I need to do here is be very careful. It's easy to put tool paths in the wrong place. So if I go down here I have my flash drive in my computer. I've made a folder called T-Shelf and I've created subfolders for each of these parts that I'm going to cut out. So I'm going to make four separate G-code files and those four separate G-code files will go into these four separate folders. That way, for instance, I could mount my right side material on the machine, cut it, get it removed, put my left side material, cut it while I'm doing some sanding on the right side, then move on to the other parts one by one by one. The thing we have to be careful about is we make sure to put the right G-code in the right subfolder. So, let's do that by going back into Aspire. And I'm going to start with the front rails. So I'll go up here to Save Toolpaths. I've got my toolpath checked. I'm going to save the visible toolpaths to one file. Well, there's only one toolpath for this sheet, so that's easy. I just want to make sure that my front rail cutout toolpath is down here in the list under Toolpaths to be saved. Then I'll click Save Toolpaths. I'll navigate to my flash drive. Come down to my T-shelf. And this is my front rails. So I'll go into the front rails subfolder. And the name from the software it lists which sheet it is first, front rails, and then the name of the toolpath, front rail cutout. Well, I know this is front rails, so I'm going to put my cursor right in front of, right at the end of this underscore, highlight it, and I'm going to enter the bit I'm going to use for this toolpath. Point. Two five inch down cut end mill. That way I don't get confused as to which bit to use for this toolpath. I've got the right folder, I've got the toolpath named, I'll save it. Then I'm going to switch over to the left side. Left side I have two toolpaths. I'll select them both. 
both visible toolpaths to one file. The way I have this arranged, it will cut my dados and rabbit first, which is what I want. Then it will come in and it will do the cutout last. That's what I want. But it's going to save it as one piece of G code. I have my machine selected, my post processor selected. Save toolpath. Now I need to go out of that subfolder. And this is the left side. I'll double click to put it into this folder. And I'll rename this left side all toolpaths. Go back up here, and again I'm using a quarter inch down cut end mill. 0.25 inch down cut end mill. Save. Now, I'm going to do the other two toolpaths exactly the same way. With my back G code saved, I can close this form. Just to verify, just to double check. I'm going to go through one by one and make sure that I have the correct G code in the correct folder. So I'll go to the back folder and there is my back G code. I'll go to the front rails. There is my front rail G code. I'll go to the left side. Here is my left side all tool paths. I'll go to the right side and there's my right side all toolpath. I'm ready to now take my flash drive out of the computer, take it outside, and start cutting. So, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Now, I know I there's no way I could anticipate every question on creating sheets editing sheets, or calculating toolpaths from those sheets. So today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we can discuss anything I've demonstrated in this video or any of my previous videos. Again, that will be this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel, and I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you click that red subscribe button, click that little bell icon right next to it, then click it a second time, and set that menu to all notifications. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So, I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.